Evet. Yeah, they're all sleeping. I don't know. Should I? I think I can stop. <coughs> Okay. So, <clears throat> so yesterday I introduced the notion of naturalness that is amounts to the to a structural stability of the parameters of a quantum field theory corresponds to the situation where the structure of the parameters of a of a given theory can be accounted for is not incompatible with uh, selection rules for some uh, approximate symmetry. <coughs> uh, it doesn't mean, the, the, this criterion of natural doesn't mean that it's impossible to have situation where the criterion itself is violated, where you have parameters that are not compatible with selection rules. It just uh, Distinguishes it just allows us to distinguish these two situations. One is structurally robust, and the other is is not. And uh, and um, well, we, we will see when we get to talk about the standard, about the standard model. Uh, okay, so so again, the the arena where the arena where where I always be working is an effective field theory where there are two wildly separated scales, uh, some UV scale is the, fa is the scale where our theory emerges, and some IR scale where the theory enters a, a, new, a new regime. And then you could go on. The, 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 this pattern could be reproduced virtually forever, OK? <clears throat> well, or until you, you reach a gap and there's nothing. <clears throat> And, and the system in between these two scales, as I argued yesterday, just by assumption, or almost, almost by assumption, is, is described by a, an approximate uh, conformal field theory that is a small deformation of the conformal fixed point. OK? And, uh, Okay, so and lambda i, in principle, an infinite set of parameters describe our effective field theory, aside of the particle content and the very theory itself, the very fixed point. Our theory is, de is defined by the CFT, what it is, what the, the 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 data of the CFT, plus the infinite set of perturbations. Okay, the data of the CFT is just the operator dimensions and the three-point functions. Okay. <coughs> now. Uh, in this situation, every, every observable that we could compute uh, at energies below the defining scale is just a function of these parameters. And in particular, the very infrared scale itself is a function of these parameters. And so it's licit, according to, to our discussion of yesterday, to ask, to ask the question, is, is the separation lambda IR uh, lambda IR much less than lambda. That is our defining assumption. Is this assumption uh, natural? Okay, that's that's the question. So under what conditions my hypothesis, the hypothesis that there is this scenario, is is uh, is robust. Okay, it is compatible with selection rules. <coughs> And uh, as, as an example of something unnatural, I, I already showed to you yesterday, OK, a situation where you have the effective theory is just a scalar field uh, plus all possible interactions. And uh, and uh, so elicit question here is so the in this in this situation the IR scale 
is basically the mass parameter, okay? And uh, and so you can ask under what condition can this object be much less than the defining physical cutoff, okay? And uh, and we argued that uh, just by selection rules, that is in in, in our case is dilatation symmetry and the shift symmetry that is broken by this parameter, we expect that m square, this case a lambda square, this is dilatations, selection rule, uh, uh, times the other parameter that you need uh, to inform the, 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 the field itself that the shift symmetry phi goes to phi plus constant is broken. So this is the shift symmetry. And there can be a loop factor, okay, 16 pi square. I'm, I'm being very cavalier with that, okay? So uh, that's, that's basically the expectation from uh, uh, structural naturalness. And in those situations where this mass, much less than that, given lambda, given the two lambdas, the little and the big lambda, we think the situation is, we, we define the situation as unnatural. It doesn't mean it's impossible. It's just, it's just uh, not following directly from selection rules. It's a very clever choice of parameters that does not, that you could not guess from the uh, PhD student generalization of dimensional analysis that is selection rules, okay? Uh, dimensional analysis is the first thing we learn in physics and somehow uh, it seems like we want to use it. Perhaps at a certain point we'll have to give up. Okay, so let's uh, let's uh, let's consider the situation and let me and let me. <coughs> it's useful to 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 uh, address the question, okay, in the language of our G flows, okay. So, what do we have? We have what do we have in this scenario? We have a theory that starts in the UV at some point, okay, and this point is not far from a. CFT fixed point. When I say CFT, it could be a only scale invariant, but uh, I'm just I'm just using the hypothesis that all scale invariant theories are conformal theories. So we start near here, and then we flow. Flow. Okay, we can flow. And uh, how do we picture? Okay, we flow. And how do we picture? Uh, so we flow in a, in a, in, a, in momentum scale. Okay, let me call it um, Q. Q is our momentum scale. Q is our G scale. Okay, and uh, our G time is uh, log of lambda over Q. As we flow towards the infrared, So we can view the RG evolution as a time evolution in RG time. <coughs> and how do we picture? So we, as as we as we as we flow at a certain point, Q uh, will be of order lambda ir. How do we picture this point? Okay. Well, the point uh, Q equal lambda ir is roughly speaking the point where the distance from the fixed point becomes of order one, okay? Uh, lambda i, some lambda i becomes of order one, okay? So this is when you when you reach when you reach this this distance from you can characterize the on your on your RG clock say look change your description, okay? Uh, is, the, is the, the, the point where you have to do that is, is, is where some of these perturbations become large, okay? This is your IR. Uh, perhaps I should specify this a little better. If you want, in a more formal way, uh, the, the IR scale uh, can be defined as the scale where the matrix elements of the divergence of the, of the dilatation current, T mu mu, Become of order one. Okay, that's that's the totally uh, totally 
well defined definition free of ambiguity on the on the normalization of couplings okay so when when and that corresponds if you want in terms of beta functions more than in terms of couplings to the point where the beta functions become of order one okay you can you could imagine a situation where the coupling becomes large where the deformation is large but the beta function is small for instance if you have an exactly marginal deformation then the deformation can become large but the beta function is zero so the, the, the occurrence of the new scale is the point where the beta functions become large, okay? And uh, so, uh, so having picture, in fact, let me, let, let, let me give you some examples, okay? Before going, examples, take for instance, uh, uh, QCD, okay? Uh, QCD, the, the, the relevant coupling that you can define here, the running coupling as a function of Q, is alpha s over 4 pi of q, okay? Uh, is the loop expansion parameter, and uh, and uh, the IR scale, and is also the parameter that controls the beta function. When this becomes of order one, the beta function uh, becomes large, becomes of order one in the suitable unit, and and the the IR scale is defined as the scale where alpha. Becomes over the one. I mean, all my lecture is squiggly. Okay, um, uh, I apologize for that. You're probably not used to it, but it's all squiggly. Okay, it's all qualitative. Uh, or, or, in fact, you can describe in the same language uh, a situation where you have more, 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 uh, more uh, traditionally a mass parameter. Okay, let's say like a fermion or or a, or a scalar mass, and this mass parameter. Let's say the theory is weakly coupled. The mass parameter will evolve slowly because the theory is weakly coupled. Uh, 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 is, is, is weakly coupled, but the true measure of uh, of uh, of uh, how much this parameter uh, breaks scale invariance is given by dimensionless quantity. This m over q. Okay, this is called is lambda mass, the running lambda mass. Okay, and again. Uh, not surprisingly, uh, the point where lambda bar becomes of order one, uh, lambda bar order one corresponds to Q of order M of Q. Well, okay, Q of order M. Okay, so th th just to make, so you 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 can describe uh, under all circumstances the 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 point where you where you step into a new description as as the point along the RG flow where you've gone too far from the fixed point, okay? Far means order one, okay? So having depicted things this way is now obvious on how to characterize under what condition is the separation between the uh, UV and the IR scale natural, okay? So the separation, when the separation is large, say, say lambda UV, uh, over lambda, uh, uh, lambda, let's say middle call UV, much much bigger than one, amounts to the 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 statement that the 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 RG time associated to the IR scale, that is to say, logarithm of uh, lambda of lambda IR, is much much larger than one. Of course, this is power. This is a log, uh, but still, okay. So. Uh, a big separation of scales corresponds to a long uh, RG time needed to escape uh, the region of attraction of the fixed point. So a, a natural hierarchy has to do with the stability of the fixed point. The slower, the, stab the more stable the fixed point is, the longer you linger in its neighborhood, the longer it takes in RG time to, to reach the point where uh, your original structure is discombobulated where T mu mu is of order one and where you enter the new regime. And so, uh, so the longer this time, RG time, the wider the separation. And uh, so it's clear that there are two, you can, you can, it's clear, okay. Well, perhaps it's not clear, let me. That there are two situations where, where this state of things is Natural, okay, and uh, and uh, and they can be characterized. And, and 
the two ways. One is, let me call it one. So there are two situations, OK? One is marginality. Let me call it marginality. Marginality is, I call, that situation in which uh, all, all the relevant, so let me say it in the better, uh, the, the CFT uh, does not possess any strongly relevant deformation, okay? just structurally. Okay? That's very much in line with the discussion we were having the other day. Okay? You, can, you can imagine a CFT that does not contain any operators of dimension strictly less than four. It may contain marginally relevant, it may contain irrelevant, and it may not contain very re strongly relevant <laughs> operators. In, in, in this situation, it is enough a small seed of smallness in the boundary condition at the ultraviolet scale to generate a big hierarchy. And the quintessential ex uh, example, so, so in fact, let me say it better. say uh, dimension strictly less than four, say three, two. Okay. Let me give you the the let me show you the, the, the quintessential example of this. Okay. The example is, is Young Mills theory. Okay. In Young Mills theory, the the, the suitably normalized uh, deformation lambda uh, is g squared over did I get perhaps I missed a factor of two, but and and the beta function is the evolution respect to, to the normalization scale is this, plus higher orders, OK? So, so here, you, you are in a situation where, where the, the, the gauge coupling is a, is a marginally, is associated with a marginally relevant deformation. This is an operator of dimension slightly less than 4. In fact, it's less than 4 only when the deformation itself is, is 0. Strictly speaking, at the fixed point, at the exact fixed point, the, the, the dimension of the deformation, that is the gluon kinetic term, is 4, <coughs> exactly 4. But as soon as you turn on the coupling, uh, it acquires a, a, an anomalous dimension, becomes slightly relevant, and therefore its importance grows in the infrared. But you see, the, the importance it acquires goes quadratically with the coupling itself. Okay? The very fact that here you have a square and not a linear power associated with the fact that, see here, here in the case, in the case of, uh, of, uh, of this object here, uh, the, the, the derivative with respect to Q of M of Q is equal to uh, minus uh, 1 plus the anomalous dimension, in fact, not M of Q, but lambda bar of M lambda bar of m. So here you have a linear relation associated with the fact that already, already in the limit where the mass is 0, there is a dimensionality. Okay? The, the operator has dimension 2 already at the fixed point. Well, here, at the fixed point, the associated operator has dimension exactly 4. And so the evolution starts more slowly. It starts at second order in the deformation rather than at first order, as it happens in the case of a mass. In the case of a mass, it starts at first order and you dash out of the fixed point. Okay. In this situation, okay, unless you start very, very close to the fixed point, okay, close, how close? Well, uh, in order to have a hierarchy of order lambda of this thing here, the, the say, in this situation here, the, the <coughs> original value of your deformation lambda mass in the UV 
should be of the order of lambda ir over over the uv scale okay so the hierarchy you get is exactly what you get is what you put in if you want a hierarchy of 20 orders of magnitude you have to start with the deformation that on the scale of their of your theory in the uv is 10 to the minus 20 okay i said 10 orders of 20 okay whatever okay so <clears throat> while in this situation things are different okay in this situation the evolution is slower and so you solve solve the equation okay and the equation as you know very well uh, this is where well, uv is the value at the at the uv fixed point and this is okay this is the solution to the rg equation and uh, and now you can ask under what what is the value of q for which lambda lambda becomes of order one okay so lambda order one implies and you can easily get it from there is the is the is the uh, okay here you have to you have to well you can solve this equation okay and uh, ask for lambda of order one and the condition is is uh, is uh, that the scale where this happens that is to say that the ir scale is is related to uv scale by an exponential okay <clears throat> Perhaps I should write it in a different way. Let me write it in a better way so you see it right away. Uh, so let me write it with the inverse, okay? 1 over lambda is equal to 1 over lambda uv plus 2 uh, log of q over lambda, okay? And uh, imagine you start, so if you want this to be Imagine you start with some slightly small lambda uv, okay, so that this quantity here is large, and you want this quantity here to be of order one, then there should be a cancellation between these two quantities here. In other words, this should basically reduce one over lambda uv to be of order one. So basically what you want is one over lambda uv plus two log of q over lambda to be about zero, okay, okay? And uh, and that's it. And this and this is basically this relation here. Okay. So so this is a well-known property of uh, of theories with with marginal with marginal couplings. And and uh, and you see what what uh, this result implies. It implies that uh, it's enough a very small seed. It's enough for your original deformation to be not small, but no, no, not hier hierarchically small, but but let's say algebraically small. Let's say lambda is one over twenty, okay, one over ten, okay, to get an exponentially large hierarchy, okay. And that is the reason why, for instance, we we don't worry about uh, the position of the QCD scale compared to other scales in physics, okay, because it arises from a phenomenon of this type. In fact, it's not exactly that, as I will say in a moment, but that's basically the reason, okay? <coughs> and uh, phenomena of this type occur are widespread in condensed matter, okay? So BCS and uh, so separation of scales generated by theorists that have, for some structural reason, only marginal element operator is one way to naturally generate big hierarchies. Mind you that there's still uh, the need to input a small seed, okay? So if lambda were order one already at the UV scale, then, then everything would collapse at the same scale. There's always the need to input some small parameter, but the small parameter is, is not so small. So uh, we may consider that acceptable. Uh, another example, okay, another example uh, of a uh, of this sort of uh, example, example number two uh, can be 
pictured in a more abstract conformal theory. Imagine, imagine, is, is just slightly ah. Damn it. Okay, it's, it's a variant of what I wrote here. Perhaps I should write it here. Perhaps I should write here. So a variant of uh, of this situation. Uh, is can be can be pictured in an abstract conformal field theory. Imagine you have a CFT where the lowest dimensional scalar, okay, where the lowest dimensional scalar uh, primary has dimension O, it's O, has dimension four minus epsilon, okay, where epsilon is an algebraically small number, let's say 0.1, just to get an idea. Why? I don't know. I mean, there is this small number that comes out of God knows where. It's small, 0.1, but it's not 10 to the minus 20, okay? <coughs> and uh, in this situation, uh, it's possible to have the same phenomenon, an amplification of the separation of scales. Just a small seed, a small number, g generates an exponentially large number. In this situation, the Lagrangian, okay, of our system between the two scales is going to be our CFT Lagrangian plus uh, this deformation uh, with a coefficient uh, that's numerical and then it's scaled by uh, the only scale we have in the problem, that is to say the, the defining uh, physical scale of the system. Okay? Or I should, I forgot to say, this is the situation, this scenario I'm discussing here is the uh, uh, holographic uh, interpretation. I mean, this situation here occurs uh, in the holographic interpretation of the randall sundor model. Um, well, before ADS hydrodynamics, well before ADS CFT, there was ADS BSM, okay? And this was the randall sundrum model uh, with, with, uh, with radius stabilization uh, according to the Goldberger-Wise mechanism. For instance, this this uh, discussion this that I'm presenting here is, for instance, you can find it in a paper I wrote with Zaffaroni 15 years ago. Long okay. time. <laughs> okay, we are still here doing the same things. Uh, okay, so so under under this situation, you can very quickly guess what is the IR scale of this system. What is it? I'm doing like uh, Maria Angela. You can do it at a, at a physicist way, or you can do it uh, using. Uh, so you can you can you do it using the machinery of conformal field theory. Okay, doing per conformal perturbation theory. That's the way a string theorist does it. That's not the way I would do it, but uh, if you really want to, any guess? I'm doing just because I want to drink. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but that's that's not fair. Okay. <laughs> but let's see, but let's see. This is this is a, okay, that I should have given you the hint. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's. I mean, this is the computation of a phenomenologist and you don't have to think too much. That's uh, that's not <laughs> that's not uh, uh, three loops on the disk with. Uh, <laughs> uh, any guess? So let me let me. So if you do so, for instance, imagine there is an operator. This is the way uh, conformal field theorists would do it. Imagine there is an operator O prime. Such that it has 
a three-point function with O of order one will exist, right? I mean, uh, I mean, for this to be part, uh, otherwise I, I, I would just be joking. So th there's an operator that has this property. And now you can ask, uh, using conformal perturbation theory, uh, uh, so you can do first order perturbation theory in the parameter in, in this perturbation and ask yourself at what length scale uh, this perturbation will affect the two point function of O x zero uh, over such that this is over the one. That's the way uh, you would phrase it, right? You, you have a conformal theory, you have perturbed it, and now you look at some, you, you want to know at what scale the perturbation becomes over the one. Uh, that's, that's the, if you want, that's the scale where you really have perturbed at order one your system, and that should be identified with the new physics scale, okay? To, with, with the IR scale generated by this term here. I mean, it's just, uh, uh, once it's stated this way, it's pretty obvious that this perturbation here, th this thing here, it's something like C lambda to the epsilon x to the epsilon. Okay? And Sure, no, this is the way I would do it. No, 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 but this is for uh, this is for the Tazi school. No, this is for this three. <laughs> Sorry, this is, I mean, no, because, because uh, otherwise if everything is too squiggly, I, I, this is the NLO squiggly, I mean, this is the, okay, this is just to tell you, and, and, and now you can test when this is of order one, uh, you, you know what the scale is, and, the, and therefore the scale is, where do I write it? Uh, Sorry, my way of using the space in blackboards, I really have to improve it. Uh, okay, well. No. Please help. Uh, uh, okay, so the scale is, uh, the IR scale to the epsilon is C lambda to the epsilon. Okay, that's the, the obvious. And, and therefore, lambda IR over lambda of the UV scale is C to the 1 over epsilon. And now you see how, by a little bit of hocus pocus, I can get pigeons out of my sleeves, OK? I have C, let's say that C is of order 0.1. Not that I understand why, but uh, epsilon is of order 0.1 just by some uh, accident, OK? Imagine, well, I, no, I don't imagine there's a landscape. but. Uh, you don't need a big landscape to, uh, to be in a situation like that, okay? You don't need a very good lab technician to be in this situation if you are in condensed matter. And then uh, out of algebraically small number, you generate uh, hierarchically exponentially small numbers, okay? And that's just a version of that. So that's, for instance, the way the, way the, the, the randall sundrum model works. In, in that situation, you have the, 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 the mechanism in five dimension uh, posit the existence of a scalar field in ADS5 with a mass, with a mass, uh, slightly relevant field with a mass of order uh, uh, m, m squared times L ADS of order epsilon, okay? In fact, minus epsilon, okay? You want it to be slightly relevant. In fact, there's even models where it's like, okay. Okay, that, that's that's if you take if you take the model the model of Goldberger Wise, you can reinterpret it precisely in this way. Okay, that's another example. <coughs> okay, so this is the the first class of uh, of uh, of uh, of, uh, of natural hierarchies. Where do I put it there? And let me now come to the second class. Uh, the second class. Now, you had many more, right? Uh, I will, we should probably try to see in what sense things get packed into the same classes, OK? Um, and uh, so the second class uh, has to do with symmetry, OK? Uh, symmetry means that uh, the CFT does possess relevant uh, 
deformations, uh, along with marginally relevant deformation. But all the relevant deformations are all uh, they, they can they, they all they all transform under uh, approximate global symmetries. Uh, under global symmetries. of the CFT. So the CFT possesses some global symmetry. So the fixed point, the CFT, has the conformal group plus a global symmetry group. And uh, it possesses uh, relevant deformations. But all the relevant deformations transform in non-trivial multiplets of the global symmetry group. Okay? So in this situation, you can, you can, you can uh, demand, OK, according in, in, in uh, in, uh, in line with tough naturalness, that the coefficients of this deformation that are coefficients that can be seen as that are tensors that transform under the symmetry be small. Okay? Uh, if these are the only breakings of the symmetry, selection rules uh, uh, will not change the state of, uh, will, 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 will allow this, this state of things to be stable under quantum corrections. Okay? So if uh, and that is the situation of QCD. Okay, QCD is a situation like that. Okay, QCD you have you have the Lagrangian. Okay, so the example here is QCD. In fact, let me let me uh, no, let me take it here. Let me do it here. QCD in QCD you have you have. Uh, uh, a marginally relevant deformation. Uh, so you have a f so QCD is a free field theory. It's a free CFT, free gluons and free quarks, perturbed by the gauge coupling and by uh, quark masses, uh, psi bar m psi. OK, that's QCD. Now, this deformation is relevant, is dimension 3. However, there is <coughs> the, the corresponding uh, operator uh, transforms, OK, transform under a, a symmetry, chiral symmetry uh, of, uh, of, uh, of the of the unperturbed theory. Okay? Uh, if you assume that it is consistent okay, to assume that the theory at the, at the scale lambda, for some reason, is endowed with the symmetry, okay, uh, for reasons that we may be able to, 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 to explain in a moment, uh, but for some reason is endowed with the symmetry, the symmetry may originate uh, as an accidental symmetry from a previous life of our theory, a life at higher energies, okay? And if this situation is realized, then, then the request m, m much less, much less than lambda is natural, okay? Uh, in fact, QCD does even more than that. In QCD, the, the mass of the lightest quarks are even smaller than lambda QCD, so it's really realized uh, full Monty. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> okay. So let me give you an example of how of how this could could occur. Okay. How could this occur? How could 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 uh, could this ac this approximate symmetry arise as an accidental symmetry? Okay. Well, that unfortunately, it's easy to realize. That's precisely what happens in Technicolor. That's, in fact, one of the problems of Technicolor. Uh, it could be that in a theory like that, at the scale lambda, below, below the scale lambda, this theory merges into, into a bigger theory, gauge theory. And in, in these gauge theories, quarks transform in, unlike in QCD, they transform in 
chiral representations, okay, in such a way that you cannot write a dimension three. A, a, you, 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 you cannot write a mass term involving just a pair of quarks, okay? Uh, it could be they transform into some chiral representation. And imagine that this theory doesn't even have scalars, like in Technicolor, okay? But it only has fermions. And, uh, and uh, in this situation, it takes very little uh, to realize, I mean, under this circumstance, uh, okay, if these quarks are chiral in the above theory, it could be that the leading operator, in quadratic in the size and not involving any derivatives, is a four fermion operator, okay? So, for instance, it could be that in this scale here, uh, A new gauge symmetry, okay, above above lambda, okay. So imagine there is a scale. In fact, let me write it better. There is a scale lambda. There is some lambda prime in the UV, even bigger, and then there is our lambda IR. Now a lambda IR is controlled, for instance, by the quark masses or by the QCD coupling becoming over the one. But now I want to motivate the fact that at the scale lambda, the quark masses are small, okay. I can imagine and. And that's precisely what happens in Technicolor, that uh, the theory above scale lambda is a gauge uh, symmetry. And in this gauge symmetry, the quarks are chiral. And the only operator I can write that eventually can, can give rise to a mass of the quark is the following object here. It is uh, the operator giving mass is given by uh, psi bar t t bar psi, where these t are the technical quarks. That's the only way to write. I'm not writing the indices. I'm even going beyond what uh, John was saying. I'm not even putting the dots. Okay, There are indices all over the place. And the indices are there, and they, they, they guarantee that you cannot write an invariant with only psi psi bar, Okay, because these are in chiral representations. And this is a dimension four, six operator. Imagine the theory between here is approximately three. Okay, like in, in QCD, then this thing here is expected to be suppressed by the bigger scale, okay, in the in the in the previous life, and as a result, uh, uh, at the at the matching scale where where the QCD theory emerges, I have an accidental symmetry. That's chiral symmetry because the only operator that breaks it comes at dimension six, okay, and. Uh, if there is a big separation here that may arise, perhaps from the first mechanism, uh, marginality, okay? If there is, again, a big uh, separation, I have an accidental symmetry. And this accidental symmetry will precisely become the chiral symmetry of my energy theory because, let's say, at this scale here, the technique works confined. And this object here, in the, in the, in the theory below, below lambda, will boil down to the following effective term, psi bar uh, lambda cubed. That's the scale of condensation of those, lambda prime square psi. So uh, just as an accidental, I have now a history, a story to tell you for why the quark masses can be small, OK? And, and this quark masses in this picture is of the order of uh, lambda cube divided lambda prime square. And again, if there is a scale separation, this is much, much less than lambda. In fact, this is a sort of CISO feature. The, the infrared scale now is characterized by this ratio of the intermediate scale and the UV scale. Okay? So again, this is just to tell you that the explanation of a, of a structural property of parameters, in this case associated with the hierarchy, in terms of symmetries, does not explain uh, the choice of parameters, uh, but it makes it more plausible and more importantly, it sets, as is shown in this example, it sets the stage for a dynamical explanation. Okay, so this is why symmetries are important. I mean, Toft naturalness, yeah. I mean, it's it's certainly a, a guideline, but but it's it's more than a guideline because in practice, this it, at least in my experience, this always happens that whenever you have a symmetry explanation, you can think of a deeper. Uh, uh, explanation where that symmetry that you are invoking arises accidentally. Okay, and uh, th th this is, for instance, the way I argue when I try to motivate what we do to condensed matter theorists. Because if you tell them we use Toft naturalness, uh, you say symmetries, they say, well, why? I mean, they have lab technicians that do all the. I don't know. But 
No, of course they, they do understand it, but 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 uh, yeah, okay. <coughs> okay, and another example another example of this type is given by supersymmetry. Okay, supersymmetry uh, is uh, is uh, so you precisely of this type. Okay, uh, where you have so you so you have the CFT Lagrangian is supersymmetric. Okay, you can imagine the CFT Lagrangian. Let me give you another example. Example two. Uh, I think it's time to use the. Okay. So I'm roughly. Oh, so what does this? Okay. So example two. Uh, okay. Example two is supersymmetry. To make a long story short, in that case, the Lagrangian is a L uh, CFT plus SUSY. It's a supersymmetric CFT. Could be free. Okay. Could be interacting. Okay. And and then you the, the deformations are are uh, are ap uh, apart from marginally relevant deformation that you may have here. Uh, <coughs> you have, for instance, squark spherical masses. Okay. I don't need to tell you what the squarks are. Okay, your fermion masses. These are operators of dimension two, so they are relevant, but they break uh, supersymmetry. Of course, supersymmetry is a symmetry, so you may, and exactly like in the case of chiral symmetry, uh, say, well, no, this is very, very small. For some reason, supersymmetry of breaking effects are small. Okay, and this is why this is small. And in fact, okay, that's that's a fair as far as uh, turf naturalness goes. But again, it sets the stage. The, the, this situation sets the stage beautifully for a dynamical explanation. As we know very well, supersymmetry, because of normal normalization theorems, is either broken at three level or it's broken non-perturbatively. If you are in a situation where a three level cannot be broken, just structurally, then it will be broken non-perturbatively. And in a weakly coupled theory, uh, that means that the scale of breakdown will be exponentially suppressed, very much like the QCT scale. Okay, so SUSY broken non-perturbatively. Let's say we are in a situation where uh, the, the relevant non-perturbative dynamics happens because of some uh, marginally relevant coupling that becomes larger than infrared, and then, then. In this situation, the, the, the Susie breaking scale will be of the order of the cutoff scale time y one over g square, the coupling at the cutoff. Okay, this is just what happens. So again, uh, we are precisely in a situation where we have a symmetry explanation, but we also have a dynamical explanation. Okay, so uh, now I had foreseen a little detour into uh, trying to. Uh, illustrate all these ideas in a concrete case that is the pion mass okay precisely how all these uh, comments uh, are, are realized in a in a natural scenario that is the the in, in a natural situation that is the situation of energy qcd pion mass i think i have to skip it uh i may come back in the discussion if somebody's interesting in fact Ask me about this. If you if you, if you don't have question, I will discuss this. Okay. If if not, then I will discuss something else. Okay. So I think it's time to, to clean, and now I want to go to to physics. Okay. To to the standard model. Any questions?
gonna take forever. Not erasing everything. Eh? Let me do this because this is So <clears throat> I think I'm, I'm now in a condition, I hope, to start my, the second part of my discussion that concerns the standard model. We now apply these points of view, try to apply them to the standard model. Okay? So okay. So so what is the idea? Uh, so the idea is that the standard model is an effective field theory with a cutoff uh, lambda, okay, which could be I don't know, m string, uh, the mass of the right-handed neutrinos, the mass of grand unification, uh, good note. The mass of flavor could be, perhaps there's a scale, some, some definite ultraviolet scale. Okay? Definitely, such a scale must exist. Uh, in recent years, there's been a lot of discussion about conformality, solving the problem, saying that there is no scale, blah, 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 blah. Okay? Uh, <coughs> Well, certainly, certainly there is a scale, the Planck scale, okay? That's undeniable that you do graviton-graviton scattering. You, even you do electron-electron scattering with uh, graviton exchange, uh, this process has a scattering phase that becomes of order one at a given scale, okay? Sc just do the partial wave decomposition. So that's very much like in pion physics. We can guess that there should be some some new degrees of freedom at that scale okay so the scale exists okay as a as a, as a dimensionful parameter so there should exist a scale in fact there have been even a, an attempt an interesting attempt by my friend Strumia to avoid the situation truly have a, a theory that looks like a theory without scales perhaps I will have I, if I if I can I will spend some time later on discussing it okay it doesn't work okay <laughs> but <laughs> but but it's it's an honest incarnation of uh, of things, okay? And uh, so there is a there, there's a scale, and uh, so given this scale, we the idea is that we write all the terms you can write uh, compatibly with the with the with the gauge symmetry, and maybe some uh, global symmetry, approximate global symmetry that we, we may want to impose, okay? So the idea is to write all that we can write, and. Uh, and uh, let me do that. Okay, let me not write everything because it would not be enough six blackboards to write all the operators. There are infinitely many. Let me just uh, organize. So let me discuss the the general standard model Lagrangian in an expansion in one over lambda. Normally, when in textbooks when you say standard model, you say that they're normalizable Lagrangian. It's enough. It's time to stop with that. Okay, the standard model is defined by uh, gauge symmetry and particle content. Okay, and then it's an effective Lagrangian. You write whatever you can write, and then it's up to the experimentalist decide, I mean, decide nature. I mean, sorry, experimentalist measure which parameters are there and which and, uh, with which size and how. Okay, so the Lagrangian is. Let's organize the Lagrangian in a in a power series in in lambda. Okay, and let me start from the most famous part of the Lagrangian. So let me right like this l let me just do like this right so this is the lagrangian i mean I, this table is the lagrangian so i don't need to write l so let me start instead with with the most famous part which is the d equal 4 terms okay at d equal 4 we have what we have uh, uh, the gauge kinetic terms i'm i'm again very squiggly 
uh, there are the matter kinetic terms. Uh, there is the Higgs kinetic term. Uh, there are the Yukawa couplings. Uh, there is the Higgs quartic. Is there anything else? Dimension four. No, there's nothing. I'm cheating. Yeah, there is something else, but uh, uh, there is <laughs> there's theta, but let's forget. There is this, okay? Uh, I'm just a naive guy. Total derivatives are zero, okay? But we'll get, we'll get to discuss that. <laughs> okay, this is all. This is all there is at the at the at the at the d equal four level, and it's remarkable that all the things that we have here, every single thing there, has been seen and measured and tested with the varying degrees of precision that can range from 10 to the minus 10 for the g minus 2 of the electron to 10 to the minus 3 for the w z mass difference stuff like that you don't agree with 10 to the minus 10 it's 10 to the minus no, no, 9 sure we have seen we have seen the web and the mass <laughs> we have seen the web and the mass i mean I mean, you could have said until a few, a little ago, that we have seen only one combination of, uh, of the parameters in the, we have seen both of them. We have seen both of them. I mean, if you, in the theory, you've seen the web and the mass, so we have, we have seen it. Eh? 0.18. Yeah, okay, fine, yeah. In the, well, it depends whether you put the four pi, the, sorry, the, the four factorial, or it depends on what you do, right? I mean. In fact, the, the, the good thing to measure is on top of Rm Higgs. That's the truly good parameter, okay? I mean, if you want. It's not that, I mean, it's in the ballpark of everything else. Okay, so, so here we have seen everything, and that's all. And it's also, what's remarkable is basically all that we have seen. And now you can ask yourself what happens when you go down, okay, in dimension, okay, oh, sorry, up in dimension, okay, well, or down in uh, powers of 1 over lambda, okay? As soon as you go here, you go, say, for instance, to dimension 5, you start seeing things, as soon as you go to the so-called irrelevant operator, you start having things that we either haven't seen, luckily, like proton decay, or things like neutrino masses that took decades to see, okay? So very tiny effect or effect that have not been seen. Let me just list them, okay? So you have... Let me just use the same notation here. You have uh, neutrino masses, uh, Li, H, Lj, H over lambda, that's neutrino masses. When you go to dimension six, at dimension five, you only have that. When you go to dimension six, you start having like dipole operators, chi j, uh, L bar, I, sigma mu nu, Ej, uh, H, sorry, um, this is E, and this is L. This is the doublet, this is the singlet, this is the doublet, doublet, doublet. Okay, indices are all gone, okay. Eh? Sure, flavor. Yeah, I should put. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, this is also dimension six, this is dimension six. Then you have, for instance, uh, I think indices are important here. AKL, uh, for instance, uh, Q bar, gamma mu i, QJ, this, for instance, is the doublet of quarks, QK bar, gamma mu, QL, again, divided by lambda square. And more things, you can have operators mediating proton decay. Let me call this one, and this is two. Um, It's complicated. Proton decay is complicated. There are too many. I have to put the epsilons. Okay. It's let me say it. Q cube e. Okay. That's my proton decay. <laughs> that's that's uh, and so on. In fact, also other things. You can also have operators like this one. That uh, let's say let me call it c over lambda square h dagger d mu h square. Let's say kinetic terms, correction to the kinetic term of the Higgs involving two derivatives, but four powers of H. Okay? You can have all stuff like that. 
And it is remarkable that as soon as you go into this territory, you find all extraterrestrial beasts, okay? Uh, well, the only non-extraterrestrial beast we, you find is the neutrino masses. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's from the moon, okay? It's, it's not from Earth, but it's sufficiently close that we have seen it, okay? Uh, from the sun. No, okay, I'm just saying <laughs> from the sun. From, from, from the sun, from the atmosphere. So it's, uh, the, but everything else is, uh, is, uh, is weird. So here you have, as soon as you go to, 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 to dimension six, you have operators that violate. So let me just call this, op uh, let me give the names. Let me call this uh, one, two, three, four, and five. And let me comment on what these things do. Okay. So the first one, of course, generates neutrino masses. And uh, the, it's interesting. It's interesting that, uh, that uh, uh, in fact, le le let me compare this, this remark that the neutrino mass comes at dimension five with what we see in nature. Okay, let me just make a little comment on fermion masses. So fermion mass in the standard model, uh, the, the spectrum, if I, uh, is as the following structure. You start with the top, about 10 to the 2 GV. Uh, then you have an array of things. You have the charm, bottom. You have uh, um, strange, muon, tau, OK? And you go, you go, you go. You go down to the electron uh, that is around about 10 to the minus 3, this is GV, this is GV, OK? So they're spread over a range of order 10 to the minus 5, OK? Uh, so, I mean, there is an interesting there's structure, OK? They, they're not coming. It's, it's, eh? Well, it depends how you look at it. Right? <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> A range of y, of x or one of x. You're right. Okay, let's call it. Right. Is that the range of the inverse masses? No, it's the same. Okay, it's okay. Uh, the, the 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 so the spread over five orders of magnitude, and uh, and then before finding the next guys, the the, the neutrinos, uh, the the neutrinos, as far as we know, I mean we know, uh, the neutrinos are are uh, are. Um, uh, First of all, there's an absolute upper bound on the neutrino mass is about 0.2 electron volt from cosmology, from structure formation, okay? And, uh, and then, so it's about a fraction of electron volt, let's say 10 to the minus 10 GV. So what you have is from the last seen guy, the electron to the next neutrino, in fact, it could even be less than that, because the, the neutrino mass differences are about an order of magnitude below, okay? A factor of few below. So anyway, here you have a jump of seven order of magnitude, okay? Look, let me do it this way. I prefer this way. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay. You go down. You're going down. Okay. You go down five order of magnitude, then you go down seven. And you, you, you just go down, go down, go down, and there is nothing, okay? And, well, I think this picture is telling us, at least telling me, that the origin of these effects, the neutrino and the fermion masses, are different. Okay? Of course, people criticize and say, well, but you saw even here we have, we have uh, big separations. Well, not so much. Okay? Yeah, the separation between the top and the electron is, is large. But the indication is that the seed of the separation is small, because from the top to the charm is torus of magnitude. So they, in, the, in the quark and the lepton, in the char in charged leptons in the, in the quark sector, uh, things speak in favor for some parameter, uh, some mechanism, uh, where the seed of the structure is about one or two orders of magnitude. For instance, it could be that the quark masses come from loop effects, the top is at three level, the bottom has one loop, and the, char and the strange is at two loops. Okay, that's, and you can build models of this type. They are ugly, but that's at least that's an idea. Well, here you really plunge by seven orders of magnitude. And this is a structure that perhaps it speaks nicely to an engineer, okay? Somebody 
uh, used to work with radios and uh, familiar with multiple expansion where you have good signals coming from dipole from di dipole reception and if you have a quadrupole that you don't receive well because the coupling is done by an extra power of, uh, of 1 over lambda, okay? Very much like in this case. Here, then the suggestion is very much in line with what you see here. You have, you have the quark masses coming from dimension 4, the analog of a dipole, and the neutrino masses from dimension 5, the analog of a quadrupole, okay? This, um, if you have to explain to engineers, they understand it right away. And, and that's very much in line However, it's much in line with the assumption that, however, the object you're looking at, like in the, engin the engineering case, like the radio, is much, much smaller than, than the wavelength you, you, you are considering. In other words, that the, that, the, that the structure of the object, instead of the radio here, you talk about the underlying theory, lambda is, 1 over lambda, is much, much smaller than the other scale, that is the weak scale, okay? So this structure speaks in favor In fact, if you plug in numbers, okay, if you plug in numbers, if you take this coefficient here to be of order one, let's say of the order of lambda top squared, uh, it could be smaller, but again, uh, uh, for instance, if you take it to be of order one, then, then lambda, so yij order one, uh, you explain what you observe if lambda is 10 to the 14 GV, which is quite interesting as a scale, okay? It's a scale that is not very, f not so far away from the string scale or Planck scale, but string scale better, or the gut scale. So it falls into an interesting range of energy where it looks like we perhaps should expect something. So it looks like neutrino mass suggests that the ne next layer of the onion is, 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 uh, is very, very high up. And, uh, and similarly, all these other things, okay, to a different degree. So, for instance, if you consider, uh, take for instance operators in class two. Let me erase this. I, I'm given up doing everything, so I'm now going relaxed. Okay, I, I before I, I wanted to finish. Now I, mean, I cannot do it. So I, I, <laughs> I, I, I'm much more relaxed now. I can, I can. So let me let me let me give you the example. So so the I mean probably you already know these things, but it's uh, I don't know whether you've taken course in the standard model or but the course in standard model uh, aside of, of all the details, standard model is primarily understanding why I mean what is. In fact, in in many cases you you hear oh the discovery of neutrino masses is. Uh, the first discovery, the violation of the standard model, okay? Uh, that's, that's too much and too little. It's not a, a, a violation of the standard model. It's an operator is there. You can just, you have everything. It's only if you think stupidly that every theory has to be normalizable, you say it's a violation of the standard model. But it is much more, much, much more. It is the first time within this context that we see a new scale since the time of Becquerel, okay? Uh, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, the beta, de beta decay was not, Be Becquerel was alpha decay. Anyway, between Becquerel and, 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 uh, and Rutherford, okay. Th those days were still people dressed in a proper way, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> still very far away, <laughs> very far away. So, so it's a huge discovery, okay. It's not just the uh, extension of the standard model, I mean, violation of the standard model. The standard model accounted perfectly. In fact, that's precisely a success. In the, the neutrino masses are a great success of the standard model. Okay, that sense. Now, then you go you go to the main to, to, to the to the other guys, the, the two case, and then you have all sorts of other things. For instance, you can have mu to e gamma. Okay, uh, this is is compatible with what you have here. In the standard model, this is zero. Okay, in the standard model, sorry, oh, you see. See this in at the level of dimension four, this is zero. <laughs> this, at level of dimension four, this is zero. It's also zero experimentally. Okay, <laughs> that's very important. Experimentally, is not zero. Is less the, the branching ratio now uh, is less than ten to the minus thirteen. Is it correct? Is it thirteen? Or I mean, 
it, it's improving slowly with the years, okay? And uh, there are proposals to go to 10 to the minus 15. There is a Japanese proposal to go 10 to the minus 16. Anyway, you, you see what, what it means, okay? You, you, you have to produce muon and <laughs> one in 10 to the 13 control that it doesn't do that, okay? I mean, that's uh, quite non-trivial, okay? And you can think what the standard model backgrounds for these are, okay? But, um, so for instance, there is the decay of a muon to electron, neutrino to neutrino, and photon. And the neutrinos are in the end point on the spectrum, and you don't, uh, you, you don't see them, OK? So that's, that's important. That's the main source of background. So it's a, it's a very delicate experiment. Would there be some small standard model background I mean, effect, actually, through a neutrino? Link? Sure, sure, sure. Oh, you're right. Uh, Right, right. Uh, uh, Joe is right. Uh, once you have this, there is the, there is there is this effect. But uh, right, but this goes like m neutrino square oh, because it's black to number. So at the end, it goes at the same. Uh, uh, I, I think probably you can see it as this operator dressing into this by RG evolution. Right. This is probably the way to see. You're right. You're right. Uh, that will give you the law. Yeah. So, so anyway, this and uh, if you parameterize this coefficient here, uh, okay, normally this is parameterized. This k over lambda square, k over lambda square, is written as lambda mu over m square. And the reason is you want to single out the fact that this operator violates chirality, and we know that. Uh, uh, chirality is broken by moderately small effects in the standard model. So lambda mu on is 10 to the minus 3. Okay, it's not 10 to the minus 20. It's 10 to the minus 3. But let's fudge it in. Okay, to, to be to be to be nice and, and see. And even if you fudge it in, the the experimental. Okay, the, this thing here implies that m has to be bigger than 10 to the 5 GV. Okay, that's quite a remarkable constraint. Okay, so again. Here you have, so the, the neutrinos suggest 10 to the 14. Maybe if the, if the couplings are somewhat less than 1, maybe 10 to the 10. Who knows? This 10 to the 5. Anyway, scales that are way, way uh, above uh, our. So this is 100. TV. In fact, this is more, sorry, GV. What the hell did they do? Yeah, GV. GV is correct. It's correct. Uh, then if you go within, within the same class of effects, you have EDMs. Are SUSY models supposed to give this generically, or, or, or you can make it on maybe I'm getting ahead of or, or. Uh, They Generically, SUSY models, they do everything. <laughs> <laughs> generically, they do everything. Yeah. And then if you, you need the, you worked on this in the beginning, right? At the beginning of SUSY. Well, no, 83, 83, <laughs> I remember it. Uh, I mean, generically, yes. And then um, you can think of situations where they don't, right? Like engage-mediated supersymmetry breaking models. Right. But generically, supersymmetry. For instance, supersymmetry grant unified models, if the mediation of soft terms happens above the scale of flavor, then the soft terms will suck in all the, I mean, there's a scale of flavor where, where flavor gets decided. But only below that scale, all flavor is encapsulated in the Yukawa couplings. Above that scale, there are other things. If soft terms are already present there, they will pick up all this extra information. And then that's particularly the case in, uh, in gut theories with gravity mediation. Okay. <coughs> so another, in, another class of effects that comes from here uh, is coming from diagonal effects. If you have diagonal effects here, like electron, electron, and the coefficient here is, for some reason, complex. That operator violates CP and gives rise to electric dipole moments for electrons or quarks. Okay, uh, so an electric dipole moment for an elementary particle, or better, for a state, for, for a for a for a for a for an object with definite transforming under a definite representation of the angular momentum must be proportional by the wigner ecker theorem to the spin. Okay? So the matrix element for, uh, for uh, since it's a vector. Okay? And necessarily must break parity. Okay? So the, the dipole moment, okay, of uh, the dipole moment is defined uh, at, well, when you go down to, to non-relativistic limit. I mean, this operator here, when you boil down to the non-relativistic limit, 
sorry, I forgot to put F mu nu here. B mu nu, OK. I, for I forgot to put the photon field. The interaction, that operator will boil down in the, in the, in the low energy effective theory to an interaction DE. And DE, I'll tell you what, 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 what it is, uh, spin times electric field. Okay, and DE will be of the order of, uh, of um, uh, K over lambda square. And normally, this is taken to be uh, ME over some mass scale. Okay. Okay. Again, I'm just parameterizing things in the same way as I did before. Okay. And uh, and again, the experimental constraints on these electric dipole moments are are very very strong, and uh, and they are improving. Okay. So, for instance, the the, the experimental limit on the electric dipole moment of the electron is now. 10 to the minus 28 e times centimeter, where e is e. Okay, and and it was 10 to the minus 27 only two years ago. So there was a big improvement in the last uh, couple of years. Okay, so it was uh, it was stationary for a long time, and and these are uh, and, and these are precisely where condensed matter and fundamental physics really uh, talk to each other in a in a in a very important way. And uh, and uh, for the for the quarks, uh, you have slightly less than that. Okay, is three ten to the minus twenty six here uh, from the EDM of the of the neutron. Uh, if you want to get an idea of how small how, how small this is small, think of the electron as an object with a Compton wavelength of order ten to the minus. 11 centimeters, OK? So the, the size of the electron, okay, if you want, is 10 to the minus 11 centimeters. And here, the size of his dipole is 17 order of magnitude smaller, experimentally, OK? Less than that, OK? Uh, <coughs> it's, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, can I say, oh, I can ask a, a question to the students. Uh, so this interaction here. Uh, uh, so it's a it's a it's a coupling between electron field, eh, electric electric field and spin, and uh, as you know, given the quant the transformation property of angular momentum and the electric field, it violates both parity and time reversal. Okay, so this violates CP. Okay, violates T. CPT is unbroken, so it violates time reversal, and uh, and just because, as I said, uh, by the Wigner Eckert theorem, you cannot have uh, the, angular, the, the, the dipole moment should be proportional to S. Now, the question is, why do we have, in fact, in nature, objects, like, for instance, atoms, that have a dipole moment? Why, 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 what is the trick? Where, 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 where is the catch? Okay, so I can close the discussion here. Okay. <laughs> it's a small catch, the leaders know. Eh? Why, 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 why are there dipole moments? Yeah, how can, I, uh, how can I have a system that have a dipole moment compatible with CP? With compatible with CPT. Sorry, 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 sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Well, th th this other system. Yeah, yeah, yeah sorry, yeah. Um. The masses of the leptons are included, like in the usual Dirac mass term, coupled no, to the Higgs. It's Yukawa, right? Yukawa. I mean, it's a, it's a Yukawa, okay. But my question is, why not uh, give mass to the neutron to the neutrino in the same oh, way? You cannot. Oh. You cannot. I mean, the, the neutrino. Oh, try to do the exercise. Oh, okay. I, I, I mean, if you had right handed neutrinos, you could. That, that's, that's my but why do you want to add right handed neutrinos? Why? No, no, no. So, I mean, I know that left handed neutrinos ha haven't been observed, but you can imagine. Left and right handed. Right handed neutrinos haven't been observed, but you can, you can imagine taking a left If you add them, if you. Very good, very good question. If you add them, yeah. then this nice, this nice thing goes away. Wouldn't that be stupid? You can add them and then say that the you have a coupling are seven orders of magnitude smaller. Yeah, that's, you that's, could, that's you could, you question. could. People do it. Okay, could be, I, I could mean, be like that. I mean, it could be, it could be, it could be that there are right-handed neutrinos. For instance, my colleague, 